Okay, next up, we have uh, our friend, and I, I made the jo joke in first service, but you know, it doesn't get old to me anyway. Uh, you got to say something about fishing, James. You have no choice. Fishing is the topic of the day. So, so next we have James Wynn from Global Partners coming up. He's got a short video uh, that we're going to present first, and then him and his daughter Juliana, she's actually the star of the show, will we'll come up and make a presentation for us. again uh, it's a pleasure to be here I was with you last year and again this year and so it's just exciting to come and get to see everyone again so I'm representing global partners and just want to say um, as the video said thank you to you as a church as a congregation as a community for your faithfulness to to give for your faithfulness to pray to send I know that Josh is one of the ones that uh, learned to grew up here apparently this is his home place and so sending out your own and I uh, can't ask for more than that so thank you for all that you've done and for how you continue to be faithful it's been a tough year for sure around the world and you guys have felt it harder than uh, most people in so many ways and so please know that we've been praying for you as well as a community as a church as you've been ministering to your Jerusalem uh, I'm sorry man I we, we we couldn't get here in time to enjoy that meal last night but I heard about it, and I'm still tasting it and hearing about it. I missed it. I remember from last year, but those good cooks. Um, but how you serve your community. So thank you for just your faithfulness in, in serving your Jerusalem and what you do, um, as well as the Judea and Samarias around the world. You do that so well. Um, I, my wife and I, uh, with three daughters, Jared, Janae, and Juliana, my youngest, who's with me here today, 
uh, we have been with Global Partners for over 20 years now. And for 18 of those years, we lived in Central Asia, uh, where we worked humanitarian work, serving the country, blessing the people in practical ways, doing a variety of ministries. And of course, also just sharing um, our love of Jesus and how he has blessed us. And of course, we wanted to communicate that to the people there. And so we did that in a variety of ways. And uh, we're a part of several different house churches there and just saw God do some amazing things. And we celebrate that today in a country that uh, is 99% not Christian. Uh, there are people there who love Jesus now and are serving him. And so we, we celebrate that today. Amen? God's good. Uh, one of the questions we get so often is, well, what was it like living in that kind of a world and that kind of a place that's so different from here? And what were the people like? And so I asked my daughter if she would be willing to share um, just a, a story about some of the memories that she has from some of the people that we met. Thank you. Being born and growing up in Central Asia meant a lot of things, one of which was not being able to visit my grandparents very often. One family we met came to be something like our grandparents. We called them Mapu Banana and Chi Baba. Nana means grandma and Baba means grandpa in the language that we use there. I have a lot of good memories from all the times we visited them and we visited them a lot. We did it for special occasions and just for fun. Um, but every time we went to their house, I remember that we ate. I don't remember a time that we went to their house that we didn't eat. We just had to eat. There was so much food. And after the main course, we had tea and candy, which was my favorite part, obviously. What can I say? It's candy. Um, but I also remember that sometimes my sisters and I were a lot younger. We would go out in our bathing suits to their courtyard around their house, and we would play with the hose with their dog. And around the courtyard, there were flowers that Mapu Banana kept. And she took a really great care of them. And sometimes she would cut some, a few of them off for us and send them home with us along with a lot of extra food. There's just a lot of food. Um, we had leftovers like a week after we went to their house every time. So much food. Um, and when I was even younger, Mapabanana was our go-to babysitter. She babysat me all the time. I don't remember this as well, but I do remember that she gave me this snack that I really love. We called it Peachy Gatuk, and I still make it today. It's one of my favorite snacks. <laughs> but Mapabanana and Chibaba are amazing people and very special to me, obviously. I'll always have great memories from my time growing up there and spending time with them. But out of everything, about them, there's one thing that's still sad. We spent a lot of time with them, talking to them about Jesus, but they have not accepted him into their hearts. So even though we're no longer there connecting with them, we, I pray that they are still connected with from people who are still there and that they can still be touched by loving people. So, yeah. Thanks, hon. As Juliana shared, just one example of uh, a couple that, you know, for growing up there 18 years, our kids born and raised there, they became like our, their grandparents, and they, for us parents, and we're great friends, and we did life with them, and so many people like them there in that world. Um, but the reality is there are three billion people in the world today that don't have access to the gospel. Four out of every 10 people in our world today are unreached. Never heard, don't have a chance. I remember in the summer of 2000, before we had kids, when life was so much easier. Just kidding, kid. Uh, we, we, we landed there. <laughs> this is the, the facial expressions that usually you don't see when they're in the front row. Uh, but my wife and I were, went to a park, and we, were meeting, we met a young man who spoke a little English. We'd just been in the country a couple months, and we're talking. And he was like, why are you here? And we're like, well, we want, we're here to serve and to bless the people and share with them. And, you know, we, we follow God. We love God, and, and we believe the Bible. And he looked at me straight face and said, what's the Bible? In his 20s. I'd never met that. I didn't get saved till I was 19. And God took me out of a life that was, uh, you know, drug and alcohol, all these other things, and, and, and saved my life. And, and I got a hold of the Bible, and I was reading it and, and was just compelled by the scriptures we saw that, that Pastor Jay shared this morning about going into our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. And to think that even though I, as a non-believer, still knew what a Bible was, here's a world where people didn't even know what the Bible was. And it just breaks my heart to know that there are so many places like that still today in our world. But the good news is, 
even in 2020, when this year can just be over as soon as it can be over with. Amen? The good news is we still serve a God who's in control. Amen? Amen. And as Janice shared some amazing stories about what God is doing in a world where witchcraft rules, God is still in control. And as followers of him, his disciples, we are the answer. That's the cool thing. God wants to use us. And so I, my prayer for this, us this morning is that you would just take a moment and say, God, what can I do? How can I make a difference for the four in ten? How can I help close that gap? The global access problem. I didn't make that up. But what can I do? Maybe God wants you to think about praying more. I brought a lot of prayer cards from Global Partners for all the people that you support. They're out there. I pray, take them, and, and go and pray for the people you support. Pray for them daily in the evenings and the mornings. Put them on your fridge. Pray when you're hitting that midnight snack, and you want to put my face up there. That'll scare you away from the fridge, and then you'll work on your diet, and you can pray at the same time. That's great. But just be in prayer. Maybe God wants you to give more, and you guys have done that sacrificially so well already, but maybe he wants you to go another level, another level of keep supporting. And maybe God wants you to go. I was an elementary education major, didn't even become a, a believer until I was 19. Janice retired and came home, and God said, nope, I'm sorry, I'm not done with you. You've got to go back. So whether you're 18 or, or retired, God might want to use you, not only in your Jerusalem, which you should be doing, but in your Judea and your Samaria and the ends of the earth. Would you be willing to ask that question, God? How can I make a difference for the four and ten? I'd love to chat with you just to say hi, to say thank you, to talk to any of you who might be interested in going uh, or ways that you can connect. And I know Janice has a table in the back as well. So please come back, say hi to us, take some of those prayer cards. Um, and just please know that we are continuing to pray for you as you engage your community here, as you guys recover and all the things that are going on. Um, but we believe that God is doing some amazing things here and around the world. And I know that if we continue to be faithful, Doing the pots and pans. I mean, I'm totally stealing that. That's good stuff. The pots and pans, being faithful, being obedient, and being willing to step out of our comfort zone, God's going to be blessed and be glorified. Amen? Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.